On Christmas Day, 1560, several scores of Spanish conquistadors and a hundred native slaves marched down from the newly conquered Inca Empire in the Andes Mountains into the jungles to the east in search of the fabled El Dorado. El Dorado is a legendary kingdom that is believed to be rich in gold and precious treasures. Under the command of Gonzalo Pizarro, the men, clad in half armor, pull cannons down narrow mountain paths and through dense, muddy jungle. On New Year's Eve, reaching the end of his supplies and unable to go on without more information, Pizarro orders a group of 40 men to scout ahead by raft down the Amazon River. If they do not return to the main party within one week with news of what lies beyond, they will be considered lost. Pizarro chooses Don Pedro de Ursua as the commander of the expedition, Don Lope de Aguirre as his second-in-command, fat nobleman Don Fernando de Guzman to represent the royal house of Spain, and brother Gaspar de Carvajal to bring the word of God. Also accompanying the expedition, against Pizarro's better judgment, are Ursua's mistress, Doña Inés, and Aguirre's teenage daughter, Flores. Traveling through rapids, one of the four rafts gets caught in an eddy, and the others are unable to help free it. That night, gunfire erupts on the trapped raft. In the morning, the men on board are found dead, with three missing. The slaves are no longer there, and it is speculated that there must be more indigenous people in the area, which led to a confrontation in the night. Ursua wants the bodies to be brought back to camp for proper Christian burial. Knowing this would slow down the expedition, Aguirre suggests that Perucho fires the cannon to clean the rust from it. He fires at the raft, destroying it and throwing the bodies into the river. During the night, the remaining rafts are swept away by the rising river. Time starts to run out for the scouting mission, and Ursua decides to return to Pizarro's group despite the danger from hostile Indians. Aguirre leads a mutiny against Ursua, telling the men that untold riches await them ahead and reminding them that Hernán Cortés won an empire in Mexico by disobeying orders. Ursua orders Aguirre arrested, but he and a soldier loyal to him are shot. Aguirre nominates Guzmán as the new leader of the expedition and rebels against the Spanish crown, proclaiming Guzmán the emperor of El Dorado. A farcical trial of Ursua results in his being sentenced to death, but Guzmán surprises Aguirre by granting Ursua clemency. The nobleman shows mercy because it is the anniversary day when the Moors were finally expelled from Spain. Aguirre remains the true leader of the mutiny, so oppressive and terrifying that few protest his leadership. Only Inés has the courage to speak out against him. Knowing that some of the soldiers are still loyal to Ursua, Aguirre simply ignores her. The expedition continues on a single, newly built, large raft. On the river they catch sight of burning huts and proceed to explore the settlement, curious about its origins. They decide to send a black slave ahead, hoping to startle any potential inhabitants with his unfamiliar presence. However, upon arrival, they discover no one present except for some animals and human bones scattered about. From this eerie scene, they deduce that this must be the dwelling place of cannibals and hastily depart from this godforsaken place. As they encounter two indigenous people in a canoe, they apprehend them, and upon discovering a golden chain on one of them, they interrogate him about its origin. The priest, eager to impart the word of God to the native, attempts to teach him using the Bible entrusted to him. However, when the indigenous man seemingly blasphemes against God in the eyes of the Spaniards, their life comes to a gruesome and violent end. Guzman proclaims the lands they encounter during their journey as his possessions, expanding his territorial claims to a land six times larger than Spain itself. While Guzman indulges in fish and fruits for his meals, his men are left counting corn kernels as their meager meals. As Guzman dismisses the horse from the raft, annoyed by its presence, the mood among the crew gradually begins to shift unfavorably. Shortly thereafter, Guzman is discovered dead in the vicinity of the raft's latrine. After Guzman's death, Aguirre proclaims himself leader. Ursua now with no one left to protect him is then taken ashore and hanged in the jungle. As they encounter another indigenous settlement, they proceed with the intention of conquering and pillaging its resources. However, the natives fiercely resist their advances, displaying a formidable defense strategy. The clash between the group and the indigenous people escalates into a violent confrontation, resulting in the loss of several soldiers who fall victim to the piercing spears and arrows wielded by the resilient natives. Overwhelmed by the harrowing events and the brutal clash with the indigenous people, Ines, filled with anguish and despair, ventures into the dense and unforgiving jungle and disappears. The success of the expedition becomes increasingly unlikely, yet the point of no return has long been crossed. As someone in the group dares to have ideas different from Aguirre once again, potentially becoming a traitor, he is swiftly executed. 
Aguira, who is increasingly losing his sanity, uses this act as a warning to the rest of the crew. He promises them unimaginable wealth if they continue following him down the Amazon River, but he also makes it clear that any deserter will be mercilessly killed. On the raft again, the group of slowly starving, feverish men begin disbelieving everything they see, even when shot with arrows. The group stares in disbelief at a wooden ship perched in the highest branches of a tall tree, which Aguira orders be brought down and refurbished, but Brother Carvajal refuses. During their continued journey, the number of men in the group steadily decreases. They face attacks from native tribes and endure miserable conditions that take a toll on their strength. The scarcity of food and clean water accelerates the depletion of their energy levels. The impassioned speeches of their leader, driven by the desire to establish a dynasty with his daughter in El Dorado and conquer Peru, Panama, Mexico, and the entire New World from there, fall on deaf ears. In a series of final attacks by unseen assailants, the remaining survivors, including Aguirre's daughter, are killed by arrows. She dies in her father's arms. At the film's conclusion, Aguirre stands as the sole survivor on the raft gliding over the water, sharing his conquest plans with a pack of dark-skulled monkeys that have climbed aboard from the mangrove forests and refuse to be driven away. Aguirre, The Wrath of God, is a renowned German epic historical drama released in 1972. Directed by Werner Herzog and starring Klaus Kinski in the lead role, the film draws inspiration from the true story of Spanish conquistador Lope de Aguirre. It explores Herzog's simultaneous fascination with and repulsion towards nature, portraying it as an indifferent force that remains unaffected by human desires and merciless towards our often fanatical ambitions. The film confronts the notion that humans, driven by their own delusions, believe they can conquer and control the natural world, highlighting the inherent hubris and folly in such thinking. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video and would like to see more, I would greatly appreciate a sub and a thumbs up. See you in the next one. When I say this, I say this all full of admiration for the Changi. It is not that I hate it, I love it. I love it very much, but I love it against my better judgment.